Hello, everyone, and welcome to Women of Grace. Not long ago, I received a phone call on our radio program, Women of Grace Live. The caller was a 12-year-old girl in seventh grade who told me that a meaningful friendship of hers was disintegrating, her word. The crux of the problem was that her friend, also a girl, was confused about her gender. One day, the friend wanted to be referred to as she and her. Another day, he and him. And another day, it. My young caller wanted to know what she should do. This call dramatically underscored the gender confusion rampant in our culture. What's the cause? What can we do about it? And what is the truth about gender? That's what we'll talk about today with our guests, Dr. Monica Bro and Father John Bonavita Cola. We the political left, intellectual elites, certain interest groups, and teachers' unions have joined forces in an unprecedented assault against gender. Not only have they pummeled the public through media, but their agenda has infiltrated our children's schools, television programs, literature, and social media. The goal is to supplant the biological reality of gender with the erroneous notion that gender is fluid and changeable, not immutable. That the primary purpose of sex is for pleasure, and not procreation, and that anything that brings that pleasure is acceptable and good. However, neither science nor mental health and well-being proves this to be true. Back with us today are Dr. Monica Bro and Father John Bonavita Cola. Dr. Bro has worked with people who suffer from sexual addiction for over 25 years and is the developer of Holy Men, a parish-based program that provides men with the tools to protect their families, help those in need, and answer God's call to be leaders in this fight. Father John Bonavita Cola is pastor of Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church in Sun City, West Arizona. A trained substance abuse counselor, he has worked with the 12-step community for 25 years and has also ministered to those with pornography addiction. In 2010, Father John established the Full Circle Program, which offers services at no cost to young people and their families who are struggling with substance abuse and related disorders. Let's welcome our guests. Monica, Father, welcome. It's great to have you with us today. And I'm so happy we have another opportunity to talk about these very serious issues that are truly plaguing our society today. And you know, it, it's been an interesting thing to be able to watch the development of this. And I remember years ago, just to share with you, I had a beautiful woman on the program, Dale O'Leary. She had written a book called Gender Agenda. And she was talking about that what we are now seeing was most definitely going to happen because of what was being shared at the UN and in other places and steps that had already been taken to codify what we know to be untrue. And here we are at this moment in time facing things that I don't know about you, Father, or you, Monica, but I would have never dreamed was possible or something that we would begin to see with such um, a, you know, an affirmative response from our society, our, our culture, and our school system. So, Father, I, I, I want to go to you first here. You know, when we look at this, this whole issue of human sexuality, it is something that has become the plaything of, of the ideologies that are afoot with regard to all of this. It's almost as if we're living in uh, a chapter of uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, mm -hmm. that somehow we think we could recreate you know, the human person uh, with all its fine tuning, all its nuances and, and, and all its beauty. And this is, has stormed the culture very quickly and as you said, m many of us are just scratching our heads. How did this rise to the top so quickly? But it's there, and it has definitely affected all of our children. And parents struggle to find ways to speak to their kids uh, about the issue or to find the proper uh, help that uh, can really benefit a child who's struggling. Yeah. You know, and, and I think we should draw maybe a distinction here. And I talk about the fact that oftentimes when I'm approaching this topic that there is such a thing as gender dysphoria. I mean, that is a real psychological issue and a psychological problem. But when you look at the, the percentage of, of the population in years gone by that were suffering from this disorder, um, it was relatively small. Today, we see this propensity, this disorder seems to have increased. And I ask the question, you know, is this truly, you know, gender dysphoria, or is this more a culturally induced gender dysphoria? What do you think, Monica? 
Well, we're influenced by what's going on around us. And um, one of the things I want to mention is, you know, you say that if you look at the science or you look at the research, and guess what? The science and the research are biased and they filter it. And um, what I want to talk about, you can't just Google it and find it. They have removed it. Anything that says there's something wrong with what we're doing um, is just filtered. It's filtered out. And so um, what they want to promote, the ideas and the thoughts that they want to promote, is what they promote. And so a person would say, science is on our side whenever they have these ideas that the Holy Spirit inside of me says, this isn't right. It's just something. So I want to give people what they need to say, oh, okay, there is something that is scientific, that is legitimate, that uh, confirms my own wisdom from God, my own wisdom. Um, so I, I made up this uh, this appetite formation that Father was talking about that, first of all... In our program yesterday, he was referring to that. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That, um, first of all, there's our exposure to things. People were not exposed to the idea of changing their body to the opposite sex a long time ago. Then there's our experience, and our experiences more and more include people saying that they did that and it's okay and the people who say it's not okay you know like Walt Heyer with his saying no I lived as a woman eight years and it was miserable and now I'm a man and he writes the the stories of the survivors people who say this was terrible and wrong and ruined my life we just don't have great access to things that go against the cultural message and then the last part I made up was our expectation that's where we can change if we expect that we can change our brain. If we expect that, then that's where the healing begins. You know, I change the way I think about it. That yes, there's neuroplasticity. There's ability for our brain to be changed. The brain is changed, measurably changed, in three-tenths of a second of looking at pornography. And that measurement, that three-tenths of a second change, can be measured by a biochemical memory trail for up to two years. Up to two years. So yes, Things that we're exposed to change our brain. However, we can change our brain back with what we expect, you know, by our beliefs. Our beliefs. Our beliefs are the heart of everything. And our Catholic beliefs are not antiquated. They are not outdated. They are valid. It's difficult to find the research. It's difficult to find the mental health professionals that say that all oh, this is you know, biased false information. You know, we take so long to find out when somebody gets in trouble for falsified research, probably 50 years. Dr. Judith Reisman, who we just lost this year, she exposed that Kinsey was nothing but a pedophile. You know, she blew it all open, what, many, many years mm -hmm. after the culture was all in the belief for so long and validated by repeating it. I mean, you know, you, you're, you talk about Judith Reisman, and uh, you know she did tremendous work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, what was it? Kinsey, Sex, and Fraud, I think, was the mm -hmm. name of that, that book. And I remember, Father, um, years ago, I had the opportunity to interview her uh, right here at EWTN. And I just want to mention to all of you that that all of those programs that I, I've mentioned, the one with Dale O'Leary, this one that we're talking about now with Judith Reisman, uh, and numbers of programs that we've done on these very issues are available for you at our website, womenofgrace.com. Just go to the library; you can do the search feature or put in the name uh, or the topic area and, and you'll find these programs. And, you know, we talk about this neuroplasticity of the brain and, you know, Father, this is a, this is, I think that this is part of the remarkable reality of the human person created in the image and likeness of God. Only, only our God, you know, could, could create a means by which a brain that has been basically fouled up uh, by by its experiences and images and all of this can be recreated. You know, I think I think St. Paul, Romans 12, verse 2, you know, do not be conformed to this age, right? I'm thinking conforming the mind. Do not be conformed to this age, but rather be transformed by the renewal of the mind so that you know what is good, what is pleasing, so that you may know what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. And, and, and this, is, this, this is good news, isn't it, Father? Oh, absolutely. And, and that's our whole message that um, we can help people transform their thinking, their mental health through uh, some really good, solid spiritual tools and, and the overall wisdom of the church. Mm -hmm. So rather than saying um, this idea that came out of nowhere is 
is fixed and if you don't acquiesce to it you're just a horrible person we could say no there are people who are suffering and are struggling and they need our help mm -hmm. and that help can help them to align their thinking with the realities of their body yeah you know and, and this this i think is one of the other pervasive lies with regard to all of this and and that lie is that you know if, if, if you if you just do this if you just change this if society would only accept you more then you're going to feel whole you're going to be happy you're going to experience joy but as you point out uh in in the one illustration that you gave us monica this isn't true people are not happy once again i remember a caller that i had on women of grace live he identified himself as brian and 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 i i said well hello brian how are you? And he said, well, he said, I'm doing okay. He said, but I have a very serious question for you. And I said, what is that? He said, I had, he said, I had a sex change operation. And he said, and he said, um, uh, I want you to tell everybody, Johnette, as much as you can, that this does not solve your problems, that I am in worse, you know, emotional state now than I was before. And he said, and I want to know if it would be okay with the church, if I was to try to change myself back, I know I can never be restored to how I was, but if I could try to change myself back through surgery, would that be a permissible surgery? So I affirmed him, and I said, well, I'm so happy you identified yourself by your given name, Brian. This tells me that, that, that you understand who you are. Um, and I told him I didn't think Holy Mother Church would have any problem with that whatsoever because she uh, has encouraged people who have felt so inclined to try to uh, have a vasectomy reversed or a tubal ligation reversed. So why would she hold this against this person? But I think it's important to know that this doesn't solve a problem. It creates more problems. And, and it's an impossibility anyway to change our gender, isn't it, Monica? Definitely it's an impossibility. And like I said, everything is filtered and screened and propaganda, there are biases. You, you will not find what I want to show you. Yes. I want to show you that in every real woman that God created female, in every one, there is a womb. Uh, our Savior came from a womb. There is a womb. And, and that womb typically, ordinarily, uh, has a menstrual period every single month, every single month. And when a scientist says, I can chop up somebody's genitals, mutilate them, and make them look like a girl, she's not going to have a menstrual period every He's month. He's not going to have. He's not going to have a menstrual period. What, you know, now they say that whole thing about bleeding. Uh -huh. but, but at Arizona State University, I taught in the graduate program of social work, and, and I uh, didn't get to teach this human sexuality class, but this is the textbook that I was given. Hold, hold the cover up for us. I was given it. to... <laughs> I was given this textbook to teach human sexuality, but we didn't have enough people. Um, it's showing uh, in a woman how her womb dances, that her womb was designed to get pregnant. And just like a menstrual period every month is an attempt of the, the female body to get pregnant, which is what the reproductive system was designed to do. And so you see that the womb will begin to align itself and that there is a phenomenon called tinting where the, the birth canal actually opens up two-thirds of it to collect seminal fluid and sperm. And the womb is moving and lifting and then dipping down into the collection to attempt pregnancy. There are no dancing wombs in uh, men who have had their genitals mutilated to, and call themselves a woman. The, the womb can't move. They can't make a, a womb move like this. And um, there, there's more to this that Father had mentioned. Um, the seminal fluid has a, a job to do, and it is that the woman is receiving foreign DNA in her body, and so it's to shut off the immune system in a little enclosed area of the womb. It shuts the, the immune system, turns off just in an enclosed area. And with pornography, you can't take a picture of of what God intended sex to be, the gift of self. You can only take pictures of um, using the digestive system, which was designed by God to absorb fluids and disperse them throughout the body. And so once you introduce seminal fluid and, and semen into the digestive tract, top or bottom, the immune system starts to crash and burn. And at catholiceducation.org, Donald DeMarco wrote a fabulous article that says, can immunology corroborate the two-in-one flesh genesis image? Yeah, that's exactly the point. We can look at this disturbance uh, that is causing health problems 
um, because people have been asking for what they see. And so when a man looks at pornography and, and can only see what can be seen of oppositions, et cetera, then, um, then he asks for it. Because men are seeing in pornography and requesting that women do what's in the pornography, uh, two-thirds of all the new cases of anal cancer are in women. Anyway, that can be validated on the internet. The two-thirds of all the new cases of anal cancer are in women. And one of the very first things that I did was teach seminarians. And the seminarians would tell me that the men would say, now that my wife gained weight or now that my wife had a baby, um, it doesn't feel the same. The pressure is different, and I need to do other kinds of things, you know, mm -hmm. things he's seen in pornography. So for me to help the priest understand, it, no, that's the way it always was. It, it was always like that. It was never the same. I, I was going to let Father talk about this. Well, well, we can. Let's go to a break. Let's when we let come Father back, talk we'll go about to, We'll go to Father, okay? <laughs> All right, friends, we're going to be right back, inviting you to stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. We are visiting with our guest today. We have Dr. Monica Bro with us. We have Father John Bonavita Cola with us. We're talking about a very sensitive issue here. We're talking about this whole issue of transgenderism uh, and the way that this has really, I think, taken our culture by storm in a relatively short period of time. And, you know, Father, I know that back uh, some time ago, uh, you had written a piece that you published in your bulletin that was talking with individuals about, you know, what are some of the, the, the causes that have created or reasons why we're seeing this great big push in a very unique area you know i don't think that we've ever had medical science to be able to do what we're doing today but just because it can be done doesn't mean it should be done and there are underlying reasons why it's being done why don't you share what you wrote in that piece with our viewers today um as monica said there's a rare beauty to the human body and you, you, we just can't change one into the other they're not interchangeable um and <clears throat> Part of the problem a lot of families are having and trying to get good information, as Monica said, is uh, in this country, uh, the research has been shut down. So most of the research we have today on the effects of uh, hormonal treatment uh, surgeries come from uh, Europe, Sweden, the UK, those places. Uh, so even just asking the questions is, is not allowed. So it tells you how strong this, this uh, ideology has taken hold. And if you really start to look at it, if you follow the money, well, there's a lot of money to be made because once you sign on for it, you're going to be a lifelong consumer of hormones. Uh, you're going to have tremendous amount of medical problems based on the surgeries that are performed that um, are, are not in any way therapeutic, but they actually <clears throat> cause uh, harm to the body. They create open wounds in the body that last for, uh, for a person's lifetime. So e even though it's disguised as compassion, that I if you don't acquiesce to this, you're somehow um, not compassionate. You want you want people to suffer. What we're saying is quite the op opposite. The treatment that you're prescribing causes even more suffering, lifelong suffering. And so <clears throat> because you're doing a physical intervention on something that's actually more of a problem of the mind, you're not fixing the mind. Um, and you're making the physical condition of the person even worse. Yeah, you know, one of the things that really concerns me, even as you're talking about this, Father, I mean, you know, th this is taking place at younger and younger ages. And we see parents today who have these wee little ones, you know, and, and a little boy puts on mommy's high heels and tromps around in them, and people immediately determine that this child, you know, is, is really a girl, even though this child <clears throat> looks like a boy, functions like a boy, you know, <laughs> biologically is a boy uh, and and they're beginning to uh, allow these 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 hormones to be pumped into their children's body and I I don't understand this because it, first of all this is terribly unethical uh, and second of all there is a natural process of, of development where oftentimes little boys will emulate mommy because they spend all their time with mommy uh, you know so you know I, I just don't understand I mean, it's hard for me to get my mind around uh, the, 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 the motivation of all of this. But when you talk about money, now I begin to understand, hey, you know, this is something that is going to be lasting for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, maybe 90 years, right? Uh, so pharmaceutical companies.
companies have a big stake in this, as well as do some of the, uh, you know, medical health professionals who are performing these surgeries. Monica? Yeah, and I think that children, um, they really respond to eyeball time attention. So if they do something and everybody looks, then they want to keep doing that to get attention, you know, for people to look. Uh, and we have to really pay attention to when do we look and when do we look away? What are we teaching children by when they actually get our eyeball time, you know? Mm -hmm. And they want to be looked at and, and they want to be seen and valued and women want that too. So there's so many things that we play into and we don't realize all we're doing is giving people what they really need, which is a sense of when do you like what I'm doing? Um, and, and a lot of people like for their child to be special and different, and it's a new way to be special and different, isn't it? You know, you can't be the best swimmer, but maybe you can be the one who says it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable being with my group. I don't feel like I fit in to my group. And um, at some point we have to say that everybody went through stages of feeling uncomfortable and believing there was a grass on the greener on the other side somewhere um, and, and that they're not going to let us see that the grass is not greener. They're going to hide yeah. the research. Yeah, and, and I think another uh, reality of this, too, is that uh, so much of this now uh, is something that's taking place, just as my little caller uh, that we began the program with, you know, this is seventh grader, she's 12 years old. I was very impressed by her vocabulary, by the way. But all of that being said, uh, you know, when little girls begin to develop into young women, there is that feeling of, of discomfort uh, for all kinds of reasons, sometimes there's physical discomfort, uh, but also, you know, this notion of leaving behind childhood, becoming an adult, the body is changing, don't know how to appropriate that. And it's at that point that a lot of these young ladies, and I think that uh, Dr. Ray Gurundi makes the point that because of the, uh, because of the acclimation of social media, you know, uh, applauding this and really pushing it forward uh, among the peer group, a lot of young girls are making these decisions and parents are going along with it. How do you advise? I mean, Father, I don't know if you've seen this basically uh, within your population of people, within your parishioners, but you know, uh, how, how would you advise someone who would come to you with, with this issue uh, you know, at, at any age? Uh, that, that's really critical. I have dealt with it many times. Um, within what you were saying before is, is another question is why do parents sign on for this even sometimes against their uh their 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 initial feelings that th this doesn't seem right or that this is, isn't this just part of natural childhood development to question to want to experiment to rebel to to be attention seeking in the United States, the American Academy of Pediatrics just reaffirmed uh, their uh, standard for care for transgenderism or uh, gender dysphoria, and that the unacceptable care is gender affirming care. My so goodness. What that means is, if your son comes to you and says he's a boy, you have to, you have to affirm that. And whatever that takes, whether it's dressing as, as the opposite gender, hormones, or, or, or surgery. And here's the important part. What parents are told is this. It's really manipulative. If you don't acquiesce, if you don't affirm your child, they're going to commit suicide. Mm. Well, that's the ultimate manipulation for parents. Yes. And you know, so a lot of therapists will, you, you'll get two types. You'll get one who will refer you out because they don't want to deal with it because they know the, the, the minefield they're walking into, and the others who will simply aff affirm it. And they'll even go far, so far as to say to you, would you rather have a dead son or an alive daughter? Oh, my goodness. Well, so I, I, it, what do parents do when they're faced with that? That's, that's tough. Well, it's very tough, and when you talk about manipulation, that's what it is. And we're living in a day and time where manipulation has become the standard for the cultural expression. I, I want to thank you both so very much for, for being with us for these two programs. They're very important programs, and uh, we, as, 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 as people of God, have got to turn to uh, what Holy Mother Church has told us and what stands on the Word of God, uh, that he created them, male and female, he created them two genders, one male, one female, immutable reality. And we've got to accept that and move forward with it and proclaim it. 
uh, sometimes very boldly and without fear. Well, thank you again for being with us. Friends, it's been great being with you. Copies of our programs available for you at EWTN's Religious Catalog. Until next time, God bless you now. Bye-bye.